guys, it's me, Crystal, and today I'm going to show you how to make a crossed loom knit ear warmer. I'm making an adult size large ear warmer, so I'm using my 48 peg knitting loom, and as you can see, I already have that one partially done. So I'm going to be demonstrating the first part on this 36 peg loom, which would be like for a kid. You see it's a smaller loom. So you would want that for like a child size headband or someone with a smaller head. And I also have the little hook that goes with my knitting loom. And this is the yarn I'm using. It's Amigo Giga by Hobie. And this is a nice thick, it says size five. I would honestly say more like a size six, but they have it classified as size five. So to start, we're going to make a slip knot. So you just take the end of your yarn, wrap it around your fingers like that, and then bring the end through that loop. Pull it up and take your fingers out of the loop and then tighten it. And then you just stick it on any peg. It doesn't matter which one you pick for this. You'll be able to tell the starting peg easily for this project. And then you just tighten it up and it looks like that. And now we're going to do our cast on row, but instead of going around and around, we're going to go all the way around to one side and stop. And then we're going to turn around and go back the other way. And we're going to work like that for the whole headband. It's like doing a big panel and then we'll sew it together. To start, you're going to do the E-wrap and I like to go to the left. It's just what's more comfortable for me. You could also do this going to the right. Whichever way you want to do, just make sure you stick with the same direction. And you see I'm just E-wrapping and I'm going to do that all the way around until I get to the peg right next to where I started. And I'm going to stop right there. Once you get all the way back around, you're going to stop and push all of your loops down to the bottoms of the peg. And now we're going to do our second row and we're going to go back in the opposite direction. You're going to skip the first peg that was the last one that you wrapped and then you're just going to start wrapping on the second peg going in the other direction like that. So this is how it'll look. You'll skip the first peg every time and then you'll just wrap all the rest of the pegs going around. Once you get back around, you're going to go ahead and grab your hook and we're going to bring that bottom loop up over the top loop. Carefully hold your top loop where your yarn's coming out so it doesn't come off your peg and then just pull that bottom loop over the top and off the peg. And once you get that first one done, it'll hold your yarn in place so you don't have to worry about all your loops coming off. But just keep going around and pulling the bottom loop up over the top loop and you're going to do that all the way around the loom. All right, so now we finished our cast on row and the rest of the rows are just going to be exactly the same. So you go ahead and push them all down to the bottom of the pegs. And we're just going to go back around just like we did before, just going the other direction. So you always skip your first peg and then wrap the next peg and all the rest of them going around. Now here I am, I just made it to the end of my row again. You can see there's where I started and here's where I ended. And I'm just gonna go around the other way, bringing the bottom loop up over the top one and off the peg. If you're making an adult size headband on the 48 peg loom like I am, you're gonna go for 35 rows. And this is how it'll look after 35 rows. And now we're going to make it into a tube and I'll show you how to do that. So you're gonna grab the corner that does not have your starting yarn. And we're going to flip it up and around. And this is just like when you make the brim of a loom knit beanie. So you're going to find that first loop right there on the end. 
and we're gonna stick that loop on the first peg, follow the row down and then stick it on the correct peg. And then you're gonna take the next loop. It's kind of tricky at first to get that first one to stay on. And then you're gonna take the next loop over and put it on the next peg. And we're going to do that with each loop going around. So this is just like if you make a loom knit beanie hat and you fold the brim. Get all the loops on and I'll show you at the end. We have to kind of improvise with one extra loop, but I will show you how to do that. All right, so now we're getting around to the other end and you're gonna notice that you'll have two pegs here at the end. I have one loop left to put on and I have two pegs. So we have to kind of stick a different part on the last peg. So there I'm putting the last visible loop and then the slip knot is just past that. So I'll turn it around here and we're just gonna, and I'll show you with my hook right here. See the knot is right there. This little part of the yarn that's right under the knot is what I'm gonna stick on the very last peg. So there we go. It'll look like that. And see the slip knot is in the middle now, right there. So that will work just fine. And now we have to knit the bottom loop off of the, over the top one and off the peg. Be careful with this. Um, the loop kind of wants to slip off whenever you're knitting them off. So I had to start holding the loop that I didn't want to come off the peg with my fingernail so it didn't slip off. You can see it was kind of tricky uh, to get the loop off without the other loop slipping off. So be careful, but it's not that hard. You just might have to hold it with your fingernail and do that all the way around until you've knitted all the loops. Here I'm doing my last one and there we go. And now we're going to wrap our yarn around the whole loom two times. And then I left a little extra too, just to be safe. And we're gonna cut our yarn. And now we're gonna do a stretchy bind off. And this is a little different than normal. So just go ahead and thread your yarn onto your large eye needle. And I recommend a plastic one for this. It's a lot easier than a metal one for some reason. And what we're gonna do, okay. So we're gonna start here going the same way we did it first. You're gonna go up through the very first loop. Real quick, I'm just pulling the little end of the yarn to the other side of the loom because I didn't want it to be in the way. All right, so then what we're gonna do is we're gonna skip the second peg and we're gonna go down through the third peg. So you go up on the first one, skip the second one, and then you're gonna go down the third peg. So go down and pull your yarn all the way through, and then you want the yarn to be on the front of the pegs here, I'll show you, not behind them. So you don't want the loop to be behind the pegs, you want it to be like this on the front. And then just pull it tight, and I have it kind of loose here just so you can see, and then you're gonna go up under the loop on the second peg that you skipped. And you're gonna go under the loop and also under the new loop that you just made. So just pull it through. And you will wanna make it tight, tightened, not lo loose like I did there, but I'll tighten it in a second. There, we did that one. And now we're gonna take the first, um, the loop off of the first peg, but just the first peg. Okay, so that was our first one. Now we're gonna do the same thing on the next three pegs. So we're gonna skip the next one. We're gonna bring our needle down through the loop on the third peg. And tighten it up. And then you're gonna put your needle going up under the loop on the peg that we skipped. So we're kind of making this looping motion going all the way down the loom. After you do that, you take the loop off of your first peg. You just keep repeating that. So now we're gonna go down to the third peg down, thread our needle down to that loop, 
tighten it up. And then we're going to come up under the loop of the peg we skipped. And then take off the loop on the first peg. There we go. And you're just going to continue this going all the way down, doing the same thing. And then I will show you what we will do once you get to the end. All right, here we are towards the end of the loom. So I'm still doing the same thing at this point. We still have these four pegs that I'm working on. Going down and then up and then bringing that first loop off of the first peg. And here I am to the last three. So again, I'm going to do this normal so far since there's still three pegs left. So I'll go down on that third loop, then come up on the second loop. Bring that first one off the peg. And then now we only have two left. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to bring the needle going down on the one farthest to the left. Then just bring it up on this one and then we're done. And you can go ahead and pull the headband off of the loom. And you'll see it's a really nice stretchy bind off because normally when you do a bind off, it can be really tight on that side. So it's important to do this stretchy one for this headband. So now you have some options. You see this one edge has this different look to it. And you see it's kind of more pointy down there and rounded on the other side where it's folded. So you can leave it like this and just have your headband have one side that's just slightly different if you're fine with that. And then there's a couple other options. You can also fold it so that the seam is running on the inside like this. And that way it would be hidden. You wouldn't see it. But for me, I feel like that might be kind of uncomfortable. Um, it probably wouldn't be that bad because it's really, you know, it's soft. But this is how it would look and it would kind of camouflage it. And then there's one other option. And this is what I actually ended up doing which was I flipped it inside out because I was just curious as to how it would look. I knew that stitches would look different, but I thought, hmm. And I actually liked how the stitches look on the inside. It's kind of this cool zigzag pattern. And I thought that looked kind of neat. So what I did was I flipped it inside out and then I went ahead and I ran the seam in the middle like this. You can see the seam is right here, but you, it's not as prominent since it's, you know, the bulky parts on the inside. And that is how I did mine. And that way it's pretty smooth. Whenever you wear it, you will see a slight ridge from the seam being in there, but it doesn't bother me. But if that does bother you, I recommend just doing it the first way I showed you. Now what I'm doing is I'm just tying a knot in my ends and then I'm weaving them under a few stitches before I start sewing the ends together. Go ahead and do that. You should have two ends to weave in. And now what we're gonna do, see I have it like inside out, so the seam is on the outside. You wanna flip your so it's like that. And then make sure you're, if you're doing it like I am, that your seam is in the middle. You don't want it to be kind of off center. And you're gonna make this left side into the C shape, kind of like it's Pac-Man or something. And then you take the right side, make sure the seam is centered. And then you're gonna take the bottom and you're gonna insert it into the mouth of the Pac-Man <laughs> or inside the C there, like that. And then you're gonna take the top and you're gonna wrap it around the top. I don't know, that's just what it looked like to me. And you're making this sandwich here, kind of. And what we're gonna do is sew through this with a piece of yarn. And I don't show this, but I just cut, cut a piece of yarn that's maybe like 24 inches long or so. And I threaded it onto my needle. And what we're gonna do is go through starting, I'm starting on the right side, and you're gonna make sure you go through all the layers and kind of go down a little bit. So you see it's not right at the very edge so that you catch all the layers and leave a tail long enough that we can tie a knot at the end. And you're just gonna sew back and forth going all the way through this big, huge sandwich we've made here. You want to make sure you go through all the layers so that everything looks good when you're done. Just 
just sew all the way down to the other side, going back and forth. And then we're gonna go back and we're gonna do it again, going back the way we came. So just to make sure it's extra secure. And again, just make sure you're going through all the layers. You want this to be really good and, and well sewn together so it doesn't come apart or anything. And when you end, you wanna make sure that you come out right where you started so you can tie a knot. So I'm going up one more time and then I'm gonna sew right down and make sure you go all the way to the very edges too. So it's totally sewn together. And then, so I'm gonna check and make sure it looks good. And this will give you that crossed look if we do it like this. And yeah, I like how it looks. So take the ends and you're just gonna tie a knot, a real nice secure one. And then you're gonna take your needle and you're gonna weave the ends under some of the stitches and cut the excess yarn. So just cut it down a little bit and weave in your ends. And I just kind of randomly wove it into some stitches on where I sewed it together. And do the same with the other end. And all you have to do is cut off your excess yarn and your headband is done. Just flip it around. And here is what the finished headband looks like. I just love how this headband turned out. It's super comfortable and super warm since it's so thick and it's perfect for cold winter temperatures. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and if you did, please leave a like, comment, and be sure to subscribe so you don't miss any of my future videos. Thanks for watching.